Right, there were only four games played today. They're still to be played at night and boy am I glad that's the case because there is so much to unpack here. We had four games, one between India and Australia who I expected to have a close battle and uh, it was all but uh, Japan and Argentina which uh, logically, logically, which as expected ended up uh, being an Argentinian victory, but Japan certainly showed yet again that they deserved to be at these Olympics. New Zealand and Spain had a very close encounter, which uh, in the beginning was dominated by New Zealand, ended up uh, being dominated by Spain, only for New Zealand to go away with victory, so it's not totally undeserved at all. And then an absolute classic, a beautiful game between South Africa and the Netherlands. And that's where I want to start. Because before this tournament, if anyone had told me um, that South Africa would give the Netherlands a game, I would say, yeah, maybe. If you told me that they would be leading the Netherlands 3-0, I would have laughed in your face. And it's a little... It's bittersweet because obviously you want to have those uh, excellent games at the end of the tournament between the Netherlands and Australia or, or Belgium, Australia or whomever, but between the favourites. And South Africa is not part of the favourites, even though they have some great players. Austin Smith, and Cook and Cassium obviously showed today that they have immense quality. South Africa could have actually gone on to win this game. And I wanted them to, but... The Netherlands just somehow, on an off day, because they weren't playing well at all. They didn't play well at all. And a victory is... The victory is not really deserved. It's very bittersweet. Obviously, South Africa, as I said, were winning 3-0. Could have been 4. It was very close to being 4. It's This, uh, this was probably South Africa's moment uh, for this tournament. Yes, South Africa still have to play Canada, and that's going to be a very important game for both teams uh, just to get some points uh, or a victory and at least not finish last in this group because as it stands, the Netherlands, Great Britain, Belgium, Germany already have three points. Belgium, Germany and Great Britain still need to play. Canada still needs to play its second game. Um, South Africa is not likely to finish in the top four anymore. Uh, I said they may be good if they uh, got an upset win over Great Britain or a point off of Netherlands, Belgium or Germany. It didn't look likely before the tournament. It did look likely today during the game. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. But um, more importantly is the Netherlands. Um, they haven't looked good in both of their opening games against Belgium and against uh, South Africa. They gave away way too many opportunities. Um, South Africa conceded the first goal, I think, when they had the yellow card which obviously is not ideal for them. And, and, and it's a shame to, to concede the goal in the yellow card and therefore uh, experience the momentum swing. But the Netherlands get their three points. That was important for them after the opening day defeat against Belgium. Uh, so this makes the game between Germany and Belgium even more interesting, obviously. If it's a draw, that's the best possible outcome for the Netherlands because the Netherlands still have to face Germany. Um, if it's a win for Germany... That's also a good outcome for the Netherlands. If it's a win for Belgium, then we're likely to see Belgium finish first in this group already. But uh, on to the other games, uh, Group A, because Group A, everyone there has played two games now, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Australia, India, 7-1. I mean, I did say before, before uh, the tournament started, and I did say after the last game, after Japan scored three against Australia, and because India defensively usually is relatively strong, that this could be a game where Australia struggles, not necessarily loses, but struggles to get on the board. But it really wasn't. It really, really wasn't hard for Australia. India just didn't have an answer for what Australia presented to them. Um, Colin Batch, as the Australian coach, just knows how to set his team up. He knows who works well together. Every player is played in perfectly. And you can say before the tournament that it's a very, very strong squad, but do they have enough uh, to beat Belgium yet? Do they have enough experience and enough players who have done it um, to to go all the way? And it certainly looks like they do. Blake Govers obviously gets two goals. 
the other goals are all, dis all distributed between other players in Beal, Hayward, Ogilvy, Belts and Brandt, which is very good for them, as I said previously as well, in the 5-3 win over Japan. Getting different goal scorers on the score sheet is very good. Everyone's got confidence. Blake Govers now has three in two games. It's excellent. You need to get that main man going. But it'll be interesting to see what um, Australia does against New Zealand and what Australia does against Argentina because Argentina still hasn't looked very strong. They won 2-1 against Japan and though Japan only scored in the last minute and Nico Keenan scored an absolute wonder goal and if you haven't seen it, go and look at Nico Keenan's goal. Argentina... I still don't know what to expect from them because individually they've got great players. Most of their players individually are amongst the best in the world. But they haven't shown that as a team. Um, currently they sit uh, second in the group on four points, which is good for them. New Zealand and India uh, close out to top four, each on three. But Argentina, as I said, still needs to play India. Argentina still needs to play New Zealand. Argentina still needs to play Australia. So they need to continue on that vein of form. They need to get a point against Australia, hopefully. They need to beat New Zealand. They need to uh, make sure that India doesn't win against them. And that's a harder ask. I'm looking at the game between, against uh, Japan today. I don't think that they go, they're going to get anything against Australia. Certainly not if Australia shows up like they did in the first two games. But that's a matter for later. And then Spain, New Zealand. Spain is in trouble. Spain definitely is in trouble. They've played two games. They're on one point. They're fifth in the group. Only Japan is behind them. And Japan still needs to play Spain. And I would not be surprised to see Japan victory over them. I certainly would not. Uh, Janus scored the opening goal in this game to give New Zealand the lead. Pau, uh, Gonzalez, sorry, uh, equalized. Then uh, Tarrant scored 2-1. Gemara equalised as well, and 3-2 for Spain, 3-3 New Zealand, New Zealand scores back makes it 4-3, that's going to be a hugely important loss for Spain because the confidence will be shot, New Zealand's confidence will be on the rise, of course, but um, there's hope for New Zealand, they still need to play Japan next game, they could win, but they need to be wary because Siegfried, Siegfried Eichmann has had a very, very good opening uh, two games, even though they haven't gotten any points with Japan, They've been excellent. They've been a joy to watch. And Group A is very open. Obviously, Argentina, uh, Australia, sorry, looks like they're going to win the group. But you never know. Uh, there could be an upset. And from places two up until places five and even six, because Japan has looked good, it's wide open. And we couldn't have asked for a better uh, second day at the Olympics. Obviously, I'll make a video on the other two games tonight. So... Uh, Belgium against Germany and Canada against Great Britain but that will probably be for tomorrow morning because uh, I can't film through the night unfortunately but yeah that's it for this video if you've enjoyed it please uh, consider uh, subscribing to the channel liking the video uh, let me know what you thought of the games and I'll talk to you later